Welcome here to a very special Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. This, once again, is Florida in focus. For those of you that listened to my show down at ESPN 1080, the team a few years back in Orlando, Florida, you know all about Florida in focus. It's how I always ended my show, focusing on the great state of Florida, which is the second home of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. And I'm elated to bring Central New York to the great state of Florida. And this gentleman who is from the state of Florida, Mr. Mike Sofka, is with me every single Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern time in what we call the, not A and not one of, but the Fantasy Football Power Hour. And it's here with you on facebook.com backslash live now DT and on youtube.com backslash wake up call DT. The archive of these shows goes over to wake up call DT.com's fantasy football page as well as being shared on Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com and our winning fantasy football group on Facebook that you could join for free. So, so many ways to get involved. Very happy to be on video and that fantastic winning fantasy football logo behind my partner here, Mike Sofka, as we get set here for a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday in sunny Florida, where Mike and I, for the first time ever, will be giving you a virtual mock draft right before the actual draft. And I'm ecstatic for it. Mr. Sofka, how are we doing, brother? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, Dan? I'm doing very, very well. And I am so excited to do this today. So much looking forward to it. As everybody knows, the week that I'm in Florida, my Florida in focus weeks, I always wear something related to it. So I have my Yeti because the Expedition Everest is my favorite ride. But as you can see, it says Yeti Athletics. So I bonded Disney with the sports world to do the show this morning. And, uh, and I'm ecstatic about this. We're going to do round one, picks one through 32 of, of the entire first round of the 2021 NFL draft. What do you think about it? I think it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing the, the live draft, of course, but it's always fun when you can, you know, play around with it and make it your own. Absolutely. So the mock draft coming up here, Mike's going to give his picks first. All throughout the draft, we're going to track Mike Sofka one through 32. And then we'll come back to us on screen and we'll track my picks one through 32 as well. So stay tuned as Mike's picks are coming up right now here inside the Cafe Kubal studios on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, Florida in focus. The Jacksonville Jaguars are up with the first pick here. And I think this is the worst kept secret in all of sports. They're going to go with the stud quarterback out of Clemson, Trevor Lawrence. And I think this makes a lot of sense. They're loaded at receiver. The defense is starting to come around. They found a running game last year. Threw a tight end with Trevor Lawrence. And and this is definitely a playoff caliber team. I like this pick a lot. Trevor Lawrence is a no-brainer to Jacksonville. And for the second pick, I'll let you just keep going here. We got Jacksonville's Trevor Lawrence on the board in Mike Sofka's draft here the mock draft for 2021 round one he'll be giving his picks i'll be giving mine here in this special for this year's 2021 nfl draft so mike go ahead just keep going down the line as we go perfect second up is the jets and the jets i think this is the second worst kept secret zach wilson now i've been seeing some other reports out there but i don't see that gm joe douglas is going to waver from this position here zach wilson to the jets me, that just makes a lot of sense for the Jets. Looking at the next pick, number three, look, the Niners have a lot of needs. They really do. I, I, I've heard everyone from Matt Jones to Zach Wilson to Trey Lance. I, I, they, you got to have who's ever available. Now, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to become available. I don't think Zach Wilson is going to become available. So it's just – It's just a matter of who you like better, what flavor you like better. I think it's a close toss-up for them between Mac Jones and Trey Lance. I see them going with Mac Jones, and rightfully so. Big-time playmaker from a big-time school can make big-time plays. The moment's not going to catch him. And you know what? They have a great tight end there, too, in George Kittle. So that's an ideal move, in my opinion. Looking at number four at the Atlanta Falcons, Hey, look, the Falcons need some help in a lot of places. And I think they're going to take a chance here. And I think they're going to take Kyle Pitts, 
the tight end out of Florida. I think this makes a lot of sense for them. Hayden Hurst didn't seem to work out too well there. They lost Austin Hooper last year. He ran off to Cleveland and signed there. Matty Ice is in his last year. It's going to be tempting to take a quarterback here, and I wouldn't doubt that. But I think the proper move for the team is for the team to go ahead and get Kyle Pitts, who's a freak of nature. Number five, I think they would take Kyle Pitts in Cincinnati <laughs> gladly. I don't see him getting past Atlanta, though. And I think the smartest move for them at this point, they got Joe Burrow. Go ahead and protect that investment. Now, you could say Penny Sewell. You could say Rashawn Slater. I think they're going to go Penny Sewell here. I think it makes a ton of sense for them to protect their investment and what looked like before the injury was a great season for Joe Burrow. They need to protect him, and I think they're going to with Penny Sewell. Going on to pick number six, the Miami Dolphins. There's a couple different ways they can go here. They have Tua. Do they reunite him with with Waddle? Do they reunite him with Smith? I think they got him taking the best receiver in the draft, and that is... Now, wait a second. Let me back that up. The best wide receiver. Because I think the best receiver is Kyle Pitts. But he's already off the board. Look, the Miami Dolphins are going to take the best wide receiver. LSU man, Jamar Chase. This makes a lot of sense for them. They're going to have Devontae Parker still. They got Gusecki. I think they're going to line up to do something special in Miami. And I think that Jamar Chase is going to be a big part of that. At number seven... The Detroit Lions, look, they have a lot of needs, but I think they're they're looking at one of two positions. They, they could look at wide receiver. They could look at linebacker. It's got to be one of those two things right there. They're desperately needing both, but I think this is a deep draft for wide receiver. I think there's a lot of great quality receivers. You can have the Heisman Trophy winner in Devonta Smith or the guy that was number one on that same depth chart at Alabama before the injury. Jalen Waddle, but let me ask you a question. Wouldn't you like another freak of nature on the defensive side of ball of the ball? A linebacker like Micah Parsons? I say no. I think if I was the GM, I might be angst to go ahead and take that Micah Parsons pick, but I think they're going to take the, uh, Devonta Smith here. I think this makes sense to them mathematically in black and white. That's the safest yet best move they can make. Devonta Smith, one heck of a route runner. Jared Goff under center there now. They should be moving in the right direction. Next up on the clock at number eight, the Carolina Panthers. Now, after spending all their picks on defensive players just a year ago, they're probably going to look to do something different here. And what they're going to do different is they're going to draft a quarterback here. I think they need a quarterback. They're poising themselves like they need a quarterback, but they also need a lineman. They also need a quarterback. They also need a receiver, a safety, a tight end. This is where it gets sticky here. I think they're going to go ahead and they're going to take the best quarterback left on the board, and that's Justin Fields. Justin Fields, that makes the most sense to me in black and white, and I think they'll be very happy with that with that selection. The ninth pick in the draft goes to Denver. Denver looking like they're poised for a quarterback as well here. I don't know. Are they sticking with luck? They moved up in this draft for a reason. They need a quarterback. Who is it going to be? I think it's going to be Trey Lance. Trey Lance is the pick for Denver. That gives them time with Drew Locke under center still to kind of prove himself, yet give Trey Lance, who doesn't doesn't even have like 400 passing attempts in college. I think he has 11 games, not to his own fault. That's just what happened there. So I think that they're on Lance in Denver. The 10th pick here, look, they need a cornerback desperately in Dallas. They also need a lineman on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. They need a linebacker. They need a safety. I think the smartest move for them is to take one of those top cornerbacks in the draft. I got them taking Caleb Farley out of Virginia Tech. He's a big-bodied guy. Uh, I think that might be the safer pick. They probably look at Patrick Sutan as well. I just think that's the safer pick for them, Caleb Farley, very tall cornerback. 
The next pick is the Giants at 11. The Giants are in need of a bunch of things. They could use a stud edge rusher for sure. And that's why I got, that's why I have them automatically taken. Greg Rousseau out of Miami, Florida. He can get off the line. He can get to the quarterback. He's long, lean, and mean, and he has an awesome arm move that can get him to the quarterback with speed. Number 12, I got Philadelphia. Philadelphia needs a lot as well. They're going to need a wide that they take Devonta Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Did I, did I claim Devonta Smith before there? They're going to they're gonna take Waddle then there. Yep, yep, Jalen Waddle. No worry. They're going to take Waddle. Waddle was arguably the number one receiver on the team before Devonta Smith went on that run when Waddle went out with injuries. So I got him taking Waddle there for Philadelphia at number 12. Next up on the clock is 13. That's the Los Angeles Chargers. They have a lot of needs as well. And I think the smartest move for them is to protect their investment, protect that new quarterback in Justin Herbert. I got them taking offensive lineman Rashawn Slater. I think he's the best available offensive lineman, and it makes a lot of sense to get that tackle to protect that investment. Minnesota is next up here at 14. Minnesota, lots of needs on both sides of the line, offense and defense. They need a lot of defensive help, safety, linebacker, and they're going to have to start looking at a cornerback here. Well, I think they're going to take an edge rusher here. I think they're going to take Quiddy Pay out of Michigan. I think he has a, a, a big motor. I think he's a big player, plays bigger than his size, yet still has plenty of speed, can get to the quarterback, and that's what you need. If you want to be successful in the NFL, you have to get at the other team's quarterback, and you have to protect your own quarterback. Look, next up on the clock is Philadelphia. They have a lot of needs. There's been talk that they're going to trade up and get go as far as seven to Detroit to try to get a quarterback. I don't think they're going to be able to, and I think that J.C. Horn is going to be their pick. He's a lockdown cover corner. This guy automatically shuts down half the field, and if you're thinking of that name, Horn, yes, that is Joe Horn's son. So J.C. Horn, I got him going to the Patriots. At the 16th pick, Arizona. Now, Arizona has some needs at cornerback and safety, but on the offensive side of the ball, they could use help at wide receiver. They could use help at running back. I, I, I think there's a bunch of different ways they can go here. I would be. I think a receiver makes some sense for them. So hang on, let me pull up my receiver here. I'm sorry. Slow loading page here. I got him taking Rashad Bateman. I think Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota is one of the best receivers on the board. He's a big body player of the year. So I think that's a very smart move. I think it's a very safe move as well. Going on to the Las Vegas Raiders at number 17. But they need help on defense, safety, cornerback, lineback, defensive lineman. They also need an offensive lineman. I think they're going to go after Jeremiah Owusu Koromora, the guy out of Notre Dame, the linebacker. This guy's a freak of nature. I probably butchered his name, but when I tell you the guy from Notre Dame that's a freak of nature, you know exactly who I'm talking about, and so do the Raiders. That's why they take him at 17. At 18, the Miami Dolphins. Look, they need help on both sides of the ball. They need help on the offensive line, the defensive line. They're in desperate need of another wide receiver, but they probably picked him up earlier, a running back, a linebacker. I got them taking Najee Harris, reuniting Harris with Tua Tungo Biola. That is a great pick for them. They need a solid rushing attack. They came out of nowhere toward the end of last year, and they looked pretty good. I still think that they go with the running back there. Washington's next up at 19. They need offensive linemen. They need safety help. They need tight end. They need linebacker. They need a quarterback still. Got them taken. Jeff. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm sorry. There you go. Sorry for sorry for the pause here. No, you're okay. As Washington continues to figure out the name of their team, it's totally fine. You're, you, Mike, you being on the clock versus Washington's brass trying to figure out what to name themselves, I don't think that there could be a long enough pause to equal that. Nice. That's funny. <laughs> Nice. Hang on here. My screen's stuck and stupid here. (laughs) So number 19 for the Washington football team is where Mike is at. So just to let you know, and you could see it on screen, is that uh, Najee Harris was the last pick that went through here uh, so far. And that's uh, that's what we have in seeing the, uh, the team needs and different things that have come up here. A lot of great players still in the mock draft for Mike. Here is uh, is Patrick Sertan the second, Micah Parsons, a lot of guys still, Jalen Phillips, and and so on and so forth, Greg Newsom the second, a lot of guys still existing here. In the quarterback world, Kyle Trask, Kellen Mond, Davis Mills, Jamie Newman and company, uh, Travis Etienne, and a plethora of running backs are still there as well as Kadarius Toney from Mike's Florida Gators, Terrence Marshall Jr., Elijah Moore, and so on and so forth, and uh, Pat Fryermuth of Penn State, the next tight end to be there on the board, as well as plenty of offensive linemen. And, of course, uh, Zayvon Collins, one of those guys that uh, I did definitely appreciate coming out of Tulsa and the American Athletic Conference and respect him a lot, too. So, Mike, at number 19, do you have our Washington pick? Is it in? Yes, they're going to go with Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is a solid guy, solid defender. This is a guy who can – turn around a defense, and I think that's what they need. They need some help everywhere. It's a desperation pick almost, but I think that's the best athlete on the board still. Chicago's back up at 20. Chicago has some needs. They need a quarterback. I mean, I don't see how they're going to find a quarterback, but maybe they can find young talent here. Maybe they can find somebody that they can develop behind Andy Dalton. I think the pick that makes the most sense here for them is Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony out of Florida. You know, they just changed the rules in the NFL about number wearing. I, I don't know if he's going to wear number one again, but this guy went from wearing number 17 to wearing number one for the Gators. When you wear number one for your college team, that means you're usually one of the better players on the team. I like Kadarius Tony. They put him on the outside there. That They need help, but I think stretching too far for a quarterback here will set them back even further than with their mistakes in the past at quarterback. Next up at 21, the Indianapolis Colts. They need help on the offensive line. They need help on the defensive line. Tight end is a need. Cornerback is a need. Wide receiver is a need. I got them taking Elijah Vera Tucker, the guard at a USC. I think he's the best available lineman on the board there. So they definitely need help. They definitely need to protect they definitely need to protect, especially Jonathan Taylor. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is an outstanding guy to have on your team. And with Anthony Costanzo leaving here, this gives them another big body on that line with Elijah Vera Tucker. Number 22, the Tennessee Titans. Well, they could use some help on their offensive line as well. And, well, they could use a wide receiver. They could use a cornerback. They could use a tight end. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways they could go here. I got them taking the best edge rusher, though, here, Jason Owe. Jason Owe at a Penn State. I think it makes a lot of sense for him coming off the edge for Tennessee. They're going to continue to search for another tackle, but I think they got to go this way. Number 23, the New York Jets. The New York Jets, I still think they need a quarterback. (laughs) Even they did take one earlier here, but... I think that they need help on the offensive line and defensive line. I think they need help at cornerback. I think they need a a drastically improved tight end. I don't see them taking a tight end here, though. I see them taking Aziz Ojulari out of Georgia. Now, Aziz can get off the ball. Aziz is a speed rusher, yet he's a power rusher. He can really get off the ball, and I think that makes a lot of sense for the Jets. Hey, if you can come out with maybe a franchise player at quarterback and maybe a franchise player at the edge rusher, you've had a great draft, and you better with two first-round picks there. 
Pittsburgh's next up on the clock at number 24. 24, they need an offensive lineman. They need a running back. They need a linebacker. They need a cornerback. They need a tight end. I think they're going to take Travis at the end from Clemson. Look, I think they're confident in Michael Perrine there at running back, but how confident are they? They need a running back. That's who they're going to take. The Jacksonville Jaguars are up here. The Jacksonville Jaguars desperately need, well, they draft a quarterback already, but they still need a cornerback, an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, maybe a tight end. Yeah, it's just what I haven't taken. Pat Fryermuth, the tight end. The tight end, Pat Fryermuth, is going to fill that need for Jacksonville that they so desperately need. The Penn State kid is going to fill that hole and immediately take Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence to the playoffs this year. Number 26, the Cleveland Browns. They need help on off, offensive line, defensive line, safety, cornerback, linebacker. How can they not take Jalen Phillips, Miami edge rusher? They definitely need help off the line. They definitely need help for Miles Garrett. I don't think that any other moves they've made are going to improve. I don't think Javon, JV, Javion Clowney on a one-year deal is going to solve anything, especially when the guy's always hurt. I like the idea of Garrett and Clowney, but I also like the idea of the future and the growth in Jalen Phillips. 27. The Baltimore Ravens, well, they have a needed linebacker, offensive line, safety, wide receiver. I say these things, and you think they're out of players, or you think that they're running thin. They're not. They're not. If people that say that they don't have any wide receivers, I think the wide receivers on a team are greatly underestimated. However, they got to replace some defensive guys. they got to replace Matt Judon. they got to replace Ngakwe, Yannick Ngakwe, the former Jaguar. Well, he only spent a few games there in Baltimore. They got to replace that guy. I don't think they're going to find value in another player at this point at, off the edge. So I think they go with the safety, Trevon Morey. Trevon Morey is a guy at a TCU, and he can plug that hole for him. He's not afraid to come up and make a tackle, almost like another linebacker. The New Orleans Saints are at 28 here. Look, they need a cornerback, a wide receiver, a defensive lineman, a tight end, a linebacker. I think the best guy on the board is the guy you take, and that's Elijah Moore, the wide receiver out of Mississippi. I think Jameis Winston's going to have a field day with this guy, but only half the time because Jameis usually throws half touchdowns, half interceptions. <laughs> Hopefully, with this Sean Payton offense, Winston will be able to make those better decisions that have haunted him in the past. Adding a piece to the puzzle like Elijah Moore is huge. He's a great receiver. He's one of the best receivers in the draft. There's a lot of them. The Green Bay Packers are up at number 29. I have their top needs as being defense and offensive lineman, linebacker, cornerback, wide receiver. Look, if you get a chance to get an athlete, like a Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa, the linebacker, you go ahead and you go ahead and take them. The run stopper, the plug, he can rush as well as cover. This guy can do it all. I like Zayvon Collins going to the Green Bay Packers there. The Buffalo Bills are up next at number 30. They need help on both sides of the line, offense and defense. Let's see, they also need a cornerback. They also need a tight end. Running back, they could use some running back help. I only say that because I can't seem to, to decide if Zach Moss or Devin Singletary is the answer. And you got to wonder, do they have the answer on their roster? Is this somebody, should they be looking somewhere else? I think they're going to go ahead and take a wide receiver here, Terrace Marshall. I think he's the best guy available on the board, so that's what they're going to go with. Stephon Diggs, great. Cole Beasley, great. Gabriel, great, but I think they got to look to the future. I don't think Steph, uh, I don't think Cole Beasley is going to be around forever. Number thirty-one, the Chiefs. They need help on the offense and defensive line, like most teams. They need a cornerback. They need a wide receiver. They need a tight end. I think they go after the lineman here. I think they get Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Very boyish looking face, but a huge body. Very quick feet. Very effective in both pass blocking and run blocking. 
definitely a mean person to have on your offensive line. And the last pick, number 32 in this draft, the Bucks. What do they need? I don't know what they would need. They just won a Super Bowl and brought all 22 starters back. Let's face it, though. They could use a quarterback for the future. I don't know if they reach for one here. I think the things that most teams need are defensive linemen, offensive linemen, just like most other teams in this draft. They have a need there as well. I don't know if they need a wide receiver. They may elect to go running back here. They may elect to go quarterback, but I think it's a reach. I think you can get one later on if you want, maybe a Davis Mills or Kyle Trask in the next couple rounds. I think they go with the edge rusher out of Washington, Joe Tryon. Joe Tryon, the edge rusher, can get off the ball. He's got a quick first move. He can get around the tackle, and that's what they need. They're going to need somebody to help them rush the opposing quarterback. So there's the first round at a glance, all 32 teams for you, Dan. Yeah, you know, and amazing here, as Mike has provided for us uh, his picks, which I think are great and uh, definitely Uh, Love being able to see this and have it broken down here. So we have his picks. His picks are in. And just a beautiful thing to be able to look through all of this and to save, you know, these picks that he has here. As you've just seen the the picks that Mike has made inside of this draft. And, uh, you know, just really... Uh, for me, I, I'm i very much looking forward to being able to bring you my picks and, and being able to talk with you about what I see here as we go forward. Some of them are going to be the same. Some of them are going to be different. And we're definitely going to get into those right in one second here as we head back inside of the studios. So those picks coming from Mike Sofka here inside of our special Florida In Focus Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora inside of the Cafe Kubal Travel Studios. That's right, baby. Just like you do with Cafe Kubal with your with your coffee or your chai, your tea, you, all you have to do is put it in that travel mug and grab and go. That's what we're doing with the Cafe Kubal Studios. Here with us, Mike and I, inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly presented by the Wildcat Sports Pub as we are down in Florida all week long and here for the draft. Mike, your picks in the mind. Mean, what do you think about going through this? It's the first time that we ever got to uh, put our picks up like this. So what was it like for you in the moment to kind of, you know, feel feel that a little bit of anxiety that uh, a team feels when they're drafting as well? Look, if you can't feel uncomfortable, you're doing the wrong thing and you're in the wrong place. Comfort is a luxury that few of us can afford. I think you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations, and it's fun to put yourself on the clock like that in the mind of the GM of an NFL team, because that's pretty much what we do playing fantasy football anyway. So it's always good to shop for the ingredients, as Parcells used to say. Yeah, and with that being said, I get to shop for my ingredients next. And now time here to go with my picks here, Dan Tortora. Mike Sofka gave his 2021 NFL mock draft first round, and I will be doing the exact same thing for you here where sports meets life on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, giving you my first round picks here in a special draft thing that we have inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour, proudly powered by the Wildcat Sports Pub on 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York. And so make sure you head out there seven days a week to dine in as well as for takeout and delivery to call 315-487-2222. That's 315-487-2222. 2222 for all things fantasy football. We do it out at the Wildcat. And so, as we get ready for this fantasy football season, Mike and I bringing you our mock draft. And now I get to give you my picks. So, number one, as Mike said, one of the least best kept secrets ever in the history of the draft the Jacksonville Jaguars going with Trevor Lawrence. Listen, the man has lost, I think, what, three or four games in seven years. He knows how to win at the high school level, he knows how to win collegiately. He has helped Clemson to continue to be the only team that pushes Alabama in the college football playoff. All the respect in the world to Trevor Lawrence. This is a guy who the Jaguars, listen, they have tried with Blaine Gabbert. They have tried with Blake Bortles. They tried very shortly with Gardner Minshew. They tried for 15 seconds with Nick Foles before he got injured after they paid him a bunch of money to come to Jacksonville. It is now time to look for their franchise quarterback, which they've been doing since Mark Brunel, And this may be the time that they finally get the splash that they need. I hope that this man stays healthy and has an amazing career and stays in Jacksonville and that they find everything in him. It has been a long time and a lot of swings and misses. 
the Jacksonville Jaguars hoping to swing and hit this one out of the ballpark, hit this one out of TIAA Bankfield with Mr. Trevor Lawrence. And I'm so nervous about this pick as a Jaguar fan and someone who's covered the Jaguars because it seems like an easy pick. It seems like the right thing to do. But Jacksonville, it's just throughout history, things haven't worked out. So I hope that this one does. Next pick, another worst kept secret, and that's Zach Wilson, quarterback out of BYU, going to the Jets. If not for Trevor Lawrence in this draft, I think Zach Wilson would be looked at by the Jacksonville Jaguars at number one overall. I think he's talented. I think he can be effective right away. But what the Jets need to do, which they didn't do for Sam Darnold, nor did they do it for Mark Sanchez, which is give them weapons. They constantly make their quarterback the scapegoat when they take away their running backs, take away their receivers, take away their tight ends. The best receiver that Mark Sanchez had was Dustin Keller, and they let him go at the tight end position. The best wide receivers that Sam Darnold had were Robbie Anderson and Quincy Inunua, and they let those guys go. And then they eventually let the quarterback go, blaming it all on him, which is totally wrong and totally uncalled for. And whether it was Rex Ryan or Adam Gase, they continue to make those decisions because the front office of the New York Jets, to me, needs a little bit of a shakeup because I just don't think they're run that well. But hopefully they pick Zach Wilson here and make the smart decision. My number three, as the Niners traded up from 12 to three, I believe that they're going to really roll the dice here. I think they're going to take a chance and roll the dice in a big way, and they're going to take Trey Lance at number three overall. There's a reason why they traded up nine spots. I think that they make the move for the North Dakota State quarterback, and they bank on the fact that he is talented, he is effective, and we know what Carson Wentz did coming out of the area. So they're going to go for Trey Lance. They're going to give him an opportunity here at number three and see what he can do. And this is going to be high risk, high reward type of situation here for the San Francisco 49ers. At number four, I would think that they would maybe go quarterback, but I don't think they can help themselves. And Julio Jones, listen, the ankle injuries, the foot injuries, everything going on with his body, they're going to have to be prepared for the future. And I see the Atlanta Falcons drafting Devontae Smith from the Alabama Crimson Tide. Devontae Smith coming to Atlanta as the future wide receiver for this team. Kelvin Ridley hasn't gotten it done, so they're going to go to Devontae Smith and transition out of the Julio Jones era into Devontae, and they're still going to have to look for a quarterback, which I think they may assess assess later in the draft, but not right now. I don't think the Cincinnati Bengals at number five can help themselves. I know there's a lot of talent here, but I don't think they can help themselves from the fact that Jamar Chase is there at number five for the Cincinnati Bengals to reunite with Joe Burrow and give him an electrifying guy to throw to. Now, there's a bunch of guys that are coming in here. Thaddeus Moss is reuniting with him, coming on you know, to the team as, as a free agent move, so to speak, an undrafted guy. So Thaddeus Moss is there. T. Higgins is there. A.J. Green isn't anymore, which means they need a number one, and Jamar Chase will be sitting there for him, which allows Miami to do something really awesome which is keep one of the best players in the draft in the state of Florida as Miami at number six gets Kyle Pitts, who's, who's, who is declared by some to be the sixth best player in the entire draft. So a little bit of irony there. Kyle Pitts going to Miami to have some time with Tua Tungvaloa as his quarterback. And Miami, if they get this pick, they will be going crazy. I know there's a lot of Miami Dolphins fans watching this right now, especially with us being in Florida for Wake Up Calls, Florida in Focus Week on site on location. Fans are going to be very happy, including my buddy Jason Lucas, to see that this is the pick that they get. I do think it's very possible, and I think it's going to happen. And Kyle Pitts going to Miami, going from Gainesville to Miami, a little bit down the coast here to South Beach, loving this opportunity. And if the Miami Dolphins can get this done, boy, will they be happy. The Detroit Lions need a lot of help. I feel like you can cut and paste that from season to season, and it rings true. They need help. They need a splash at a lot of different places here. There's different wide receivers that they can go after. There's different opportunities they can go after. But I don't think they can help themselves from seeing Penn State linebacker Micah Parsons join the team here for the Detroit Lions. I know it might be, and that might be the, the most exciting pick for fans, but it should be because Micah Parsons is a freaking terror. And I was covering this guy when he was in high school going through his recruitment process. Micah Parsons is no slouch and a help for an era that Detroit Lions definitely need. They've made some moves offensively. They brought in Jared Goff. They got a ton of picks. Micah Parsons, a great pick here at number seven. 
which leaves the Carolina Panthers at number eight. And where will they go at number eight? Man, they need a lot of different things. They brought in Sam Darnold, so I'd imagine that they're going to utilize him. Teddy Bridgewater, still a question mark. So at this pick at number eight, there's a few different places they can go. I don't think they're going to go quarterback. I think at this pick, they're going to look to protect their quarterback and get Penny Sewell and get him out of Oregon and bring him in at number eight for the Carolina Panthers, which leaves us at number nine with a team like Jacksonville that's been trying to find a quarterback. But unlike Jacksonville, they try to find a new quarterback every single season. At least the Jaguars banked on Blaine for a little while, and they banked on Blake for a few seasons. This time, you know, when we get to Denver here, every single year, they're looking like the old school Cleveland Browns. And when I say old school, I don't mean way, way back in the Jim Brown days. I mean, when they came back in 99 and had a different quarterback, it felt like every single year. Well, the Denver Broncos, even worse than Jacksonville, is not a compliment. Justin Fields, though, will be the guy that the Denver Broncos will go with as they take another attempt at a franchise quarterback. I'm not 100% sold on Justin Fields, hence why he comes in at number nine. But I think the Denver Broncos, again, having them fall to him is a perfect situation for them. The Dallas Cowboys have long since needed help defensively. They're going to take Patrick Sertan the second out of Alabama at corner at the number 10 pick in this year's 2021 NFL draft. This being the voice of Dan Satora giving you my mock draft as Mike Sofka just gave you his as we both are doing this inside of a very special Florida in focus fantasy football power hour brought to you by the Wildcat Sports Pub. The Giants need help everywhere. We know that. The Giants need help in so many different areas. It's ridiculous. And so, I mean, wide receiver-wise, they haven't really made a splash anywhere. And so that leaves me to sit here and think, who could they take at this pick? Because I think the Eagles are going to take whoever they don't take. So this is going to be an interesting pick here as far as where the Giants go. Because Jalen Waddell is sitting there. They could go and get Jalen Waddell to help out Daniel Jones. But I think they're going to go – this you know, this really honestly goes back and forth for me. And I could see the Giants taking Elijah Moore. I could see them taking Kadarius Toney. I can see them taking Jalen Waddell. And I think – I'm going to go with where I think Philadelphia is going to go. So I'm going to have the New York Giants, just like they did with offensive linemen, when the number one offensive lineman was there and the top four were there, and they went to the, the fourth – most available offensive they, they, as far as on the board of, of the rankings, the fourth available offensive lineman, they did that last year. So I think that they'll do that with Elijah Moore. They won't take the best available wide receiver, just like they didn't take the best available offensive lineman. And they're going to have Elijah Moore try and help out Daniel Jones and company with the giants, which leaves Jalen Waddle to go to where I think he'll be going, which is Philadelphia here. And like I said, I could see the giants going in different places at wide receiver, but I think they will go wide receiver as Jalen Waddle will end up with the Philadelphia Eagles. I do see him fitting in there nicely with Alabama and Jalen Hurts, who used to be at Bama Lama before he decided to transfer out. The Chargers need to find some help in protecting, protecting their quarterback, protecting that treasure that they have in Justin Herbert. So they're going to have to go to offensive line. And I think at this point here, they will be going with a Rashawn Slater on the offensive line to help them out with the Los Angeles Chargers, which leaves Minnesota, the Vikings, at the 14th overall pick. And, Mike, I agree with you on this pick. I think they're going to go with Quiddy Payne here and bring him in and have him be their edge rusher in Minnesota. They're going to bolster up that defense and try and help themselves out, as they do have talent there in Minnesota. But I think defensively here at number 14 makes sense for them, which gives me number 15. And, yes, folks, I told you this could happen, and brace yourselves for impact. The New England Patriots will draft Mac Jones, the quarterback out of Alabama, and get themselves a franchise quarterback and somebody to take Bill Belichick into another era. Belichick's been spending money like that money monopoly money. He has been out there like crazy. Hell hath no fury like a Belichick scorned. And after seeing Tom Brady win a Super Bowl without him, he's got a lot to prove. And the the worst thing you could do to Bill Belichick is to piss him off. And I know his pissed face looks like his happy face, but trust me, that boy angry. And he's going with Mac Jones to build his team into a positive future. Number 15, the Patriots somehow come away 
with Mac Jones in this year's NFL draft in round number one. Number 16 for the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals can go to a lot of places here. They have brought in some talent in a bunch of different areas. I like what they've done at running back. I like what they've done at wide receiver. So where they can go here is kind of up in the air a little bit because they could get some help defensively to put themselves in a better situation but, and, you know, with the Rams having to change their quarterback to Matt Stafford, with the Niners bringing in a new quarterback and the Seattle Seahawks really being their only push right now because of Seattle coming back with a bunch of talent, I think that this puts them in a situation where they could to go to a bunch of different places. They don't have to necessarily go to defense. And I think that they're going to bring in Rashad Bateman. I think Rashad Bateman will find his way to the Arizona Cardinals at number 16 which brings me to the Las Vegas Raiders. And I think they're going to go defense on this side of it. I don't think that he necessarily cares that much about protecting Derek Carr because I don't think he's sold on him. So I think that John Gruden will go with Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, and he will be coming from Notre Dame at linebacker, number 17 to the Las Vegas Raiders. That means that the Miami Dolphins have picked number 18. And after Getting to a Tungvaloa and having Kyle Pitts come in earlier in my mock draft here, this means that they could really just look around and try to find what would make the most sense for them. And I think Najee Harris does exactly that. The number one running back coming off the board at number 18. We know that running backs have dipped in the league in, in prior drafts, and I think they'll dip here, but not outside of the top 20, Najee Harris. Miami's going to have a really nice-looking team. You got Alabama's Tua Tagovailoa, you have Alabama's Najee Harris, and you have Florida's Kyle Pitts, the SEC in Miami. I love it, and I think that it's going to be. Happens. That's what happens when you lose a lot of games. <laughs> you get to the top of the draft. You get great picks. Yeah, absolutely. All you got to do is suck for, you know, since Dan Marino. And, they, and, and I've said this, and I'll say it again. The Miami Dolphins have been rebuilding since Dan Marino retired. And if you think I'm wrong, go back and check the tape. Two decades plus – of trying to rebuild a team after Dan Marino lost 62 to seven with the Miami Dolphins against the Jacksonville Jaguars and my Fred Taylor, my favorite player. So with that being said, that brings us to the Washington football team, the Washington football team with a lot of different places that they can go to here as well. A Washington football team could stand to help themselves under Ron Rivera in a lot of different ways. And, you know, Washington to me, they didn't have anybody really that you could lean on at wide receiver, it, but there's also some help that they need defensively. So this, this could be many different picks, but I think they're going to end up going with Kadarius Tony, Kadarius Tony coming out of Florida, going to the Washington football team, which brings me to number 20, the Chicago bears, the Chicago bears. When I talk about needing help, they need a lot of help. They need help everywhere. And I, I'm, I'm moved for them to maybe take a quarterback right here, but they just brought in Andy Dalton, and I think they're going to rock with Andy Dalton for a little while. They've been trying to figure out what's going to be for them moving forward at different positions offensively, and I know that they like going after their wide receivers. They've tried to do it through trades and free agency and all that stuff in recent history. Uh, this time around, Terrence Marshall out of LSU is sitting there at number 20 for Chicago, which I think they go here. But don't be surprised if they go offensive or defensive line, but I'm going to have them take Terrence Marshall here at number 20. The Colts are next up on the board. The Colts are going to have to protect their quarterback. This is something that they really need to work on and have done. I think Elijah uh, Vera Tucker here out of USC at number 21 makes sense for them to bring him in on the interior of the offensive line to protect their quarterback as they step, for, step forward here after the Andrew Luck era, after the Phillip Rivers era, as they continue to try and find, you know, what their identity is moving forward. And number 22, the Tennessee Titans, they have a lot of different places as well that they can go to. They love going after wide receivers. They usually get to do it in the top 10. And I know so this is enticing for them to do as they've lost some guys and there's a few guys that are out there that they could really reach to. They got Derrick Henry at running back, and the best available are defensive players here at the top. I think that the Tennessee Titans be, continue to harass defensively, and at number 22, I can see them taking either J.C. Horn or taking Jalen Phillips, an edge rusher out of Miami. I am going to lean on uh, J.C. Horn being the pick here for Tennessee at corner out of South Carolina, which brings me to the Jets. 
and the Jets have a chance at running back to help themselves out. I, I have a thought of what could happen here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, but I don't think the Jets can let this go. It would be great to see Jacksonville get Travis Etienne to go with their quarterback. And as Mike talked about, when you're bad enough, you get the opportunities. But, you know, the multiple picks that Jacksonville has, this second first-round pick is courtesy of the Jalen Ramsey trade that they had a couple seasons ago. Travis Etienne, just a couple spots away from Jacksonville to reunite with Trevor Lawrence in the NFL. But I don't think it's going to happen. If the Jets are smart enough, they will make this pick. If they are not, then mark my words, you could very well see Urban Meyer not pass up the opportunity to have ETN with Trevor Lawrence, despite the fact that Jacksonville already has success running the ball without Travis ETN coming in. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they need a lot. They, we know that they don't care about giving up on their, uh, on their weapons offensively. We know that. But as Ben Roethlisberger gets older, they're going to lean more on the running back. I can't believe they got rid of James Conner, one of the dumbest moves that I've seen. And Al Romano, who is also a Pitt Panther alum, who did a show with me from Pizza Man Pub here recently on site on location on 50 Oswego Street in Baldwinsville, New York. Make sure you head out to Pizza Man and have a good time there throughout the week. And we were there and we talked about this and he agreed that James Conner being let go by Pittsburgh was one of the dumbest moves they can make, but it opens the door for Javante Williams to come on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Javante Williams, big body back out of North Carolina that will give the Steelers some much needed help at number 24 overall. I agree with Mike that Jacksonville after Travis Etienne, if he indeed goes off the board, that they're going to have to learn how to, uh, move forward from that. And I already think that they have help on, you know, in, in the backfield. I already think that they have effective play there. So I'm not going to go to the backfield for this. They got a bunch of wide receivers and young guys, and they brought a bunch of guys in. So I'm going to agree with Mike, the Pat, Pat Fryer move coming out of Penn state at tight end, the number two tight ends that Mike and I both believe uh, rankings wise on the top 10 tight ends that we did in a previous show. I believe that he'll be the second one off the board, just like we had, on the books for that with Kyle Pitts first and Pat Fryermuth second. Cleveland Browns, you know, they've done a lot of good things. They've figured out what a lot of teams haven't figured out, which is how to have a two-headed running back. Sometimes it gets frustrating for fantasy owners with Kareem Hunt, and, you know, in the same place as Nick Chubb, but I think that they've done it very well. Statistically, they've both finished in the top 10, 9 and 10 respectively. Uh, they did that here in last year's fantasy stats. So they're getting it done there in Cleveland. So they don't have to go there. Seems like they're leaning on Baker Mayfield. They do have talent at wide receiver. They could always get some more help there. But I think, you know, they can also look to protect their quarterback, protect Baker, and continue to make that offensive line more dangerous. I like their DBs. I like what the guys are doing back there. Sheldrick Redwine, somebody that I covered uh, who ended up going to Miami, covered him when he was going th through his recruitment. So for me, for Cleveland, I I feel like I can easily go offensive line or wide receiver. And a wide receiver best available would be Rondell Moore here out of Purdue. And then Amon Ra St. Brown is also there for the Cleveland Browns. They could go with either one of these. And Cleveland's picking right before old Cleveland, which is the Baltimore Ravens. So whoever they pick, I think could affects obviously what Baltimore is going to do. So I'm going to have the Cleveland Browns going with Rondell Moore. They need help at wide receiver. They really desperately do. And I think, you know, Baltimore, it's going to be tough for them because they have talent at wide receiver. They have Hollywood Brown. They have Miles Boykin. They've obviously brought in some help here too to see what they can get done with the Baltimore Ravens. But, you know, and I think I, I kind of look at Amon St. Amon Ross St. Brown to be the pick that would happen right here for the Baltimore Ravens, but I don't think they need it. I think what they need to do is really make sure that they're keeping Lamar Jackson upright and they're protecting him. So I think Christian Derrissaw, the best player available, arguably on some boards here out of Virginia Tech, will go to the Baltimore Ravens. Interior and exterior of the offensive line, something to look at here, but I think they'll go with Christian Derrissaw at number 27, which leads me to number 28, the New Orleans Saints. And the New Orleans Saints, hard to believe, we're now in an era that does not have Mr. Drew Brees. They do have Alvin Kamara, and they do have talent throughout here. And I think that wide receiver is something that we know is a glaring issue. The next best available, Amon Ra St. Brown, will be going to the New Orleans Saints. I can see them taking Rondale Moore as well, but I think this is where they're going to end up going, which puts me in a position with the Green Bay Packers 
and I really liked Mike's pick. And Green Bay listened to me in in the uh, not too. Uh, they actually listened to me last year when when they went and uh, went after AJ Dillon, and now it looks like AJ Dillon is going to be a great one-two punch with Aaron Jones. So I'm going to agree here and see if they'll go with me again with Zayvon Collins. Zayvon Collins, linebacker coming out of Tulsa, fantastic player and a guy who could really help the team right away. I like Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa going to the Green Bay Packers defensively, giving themselves some help. And then the Buffalo Bills. People say that the Buffalo Bills need a running back. I don't believe that at all. Listen, I, I know I know that the guys didn't do everything you wanted them to do, but they're young and they need to have some time. Zach Moss, as well as Devin Singletary, I need some time there as the Buffalo Bills will, in my opinion, they need help elsewhere. They don't need to bring on a third running back to the team. You can look at edge rusher as well as corner and wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. I don't think that they need any help at wide receiver. I don't agree with that one either. So I would say, you know, where Buffalo can go is edge or go to corner. And Caleb Farley's there out of Virginia Tech, which I think he'll go here not too far past his teammate Christian Derrissaw at number 30 to the Buffalo Bills, which leaves me with Kansas City really needing to protect their guy. They have to find a way to protect Pat Mahomes. We know in the Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl we had here with Tampa and Kansas City, that Kansas City's biggest issue was their inability to protect their quarterback. And so that leaves Taven Jenkins there out of Oklahoma State for Kansas City to pick up right before the final pick of the first round with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 32 overall. I understand that they can go out there and they can go get a quarterback. And I understand that Kyle Trask is, is still sitting out there at the quarterback position with Kellen Mond and Davis Mills and Jamie Newman and Shane Buscelli and all that. So, you know, I'm kind of entertained that they could take Shane Buscelli, but they're riding Tom Brady right now. And so I think what they do is they bring in more help on the edge for Tom and the gang, and they make a defense that was already difficult to beat, even more difficult to beat. And I think they bring in Jalen Phillips, Jalen Phillips coming to them from Miami. And so that is going to be my draft here in the first round for this beautiful thing that we have going on here in our mock draft. And so that's what my draft looks like. And we will now rejoin back in the studio. You'll get to see our faces here one more time. As you've been watching our mock draft, Mike went first. You just got to see my picks, and we'll be putting them up on the board here as well so that you can see them as we step forward. So we just went through my picks as well and had an opportunity to, you know, now I got to feel the hot seat. I got to feel, you know, what it was like to be in that anxiety, that moment of being on the clock and whatnot, picks one through 32. So you got to see Mike's just a little bit ago, and you got to see my Mox draft as well for round one of the 2021 NFL draft. A ton of fun and a lot of excitement. And we will be putting up our picks here so you can see who Mike had and who I had. Mike, any final notes before we put up the pictures so that everybody can see once again who we chose in our mock draft, which was similar, but also different. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how we compare to the real thing. So that'll be exciting. It'll add another level. It'll add another element to it, just like fantasy football. Yeah, so it's it's Mike's versus mine, and then Mike's and mine versus the real, and then we'll get to look at all of that as we step forward into next week. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to come back this, this coming week after, obviously, the draft is over, and Mike and I will spend our next show putting his picks and my picks up against the actual picks of the NFL. What do you think about that, Mr. Sofka? I don't know. It's a steep hill to climb, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It looks like it's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. So for Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com, myself, Dan Satora of Wake Up Call DT.com, and the both of us from Winning Fantasy Football's Facebook group, you could join it on free by going to Facebook and, and, and typing in Winning Fantasy Football for free. Join us there. For now, this is the Fantasy Football Power Hour, and I want to give a special thanks to the Wildcat Sports Pub for being our partner for all things fantasy football every single week. On Wednesdays, typically from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I want to thank them for all that they do here and everything they do in the community. Support local and support CNY at the Wildcat by going to 3680 Milton Avenue in Camillus, New York, and of course, dining in you can do that seven days a week you can also order for takeout and delivery by calling 315-487-2222 that's 
487-2222. And I want to give a special thanks as well to Cafe Kubal, Carvel DeWitt, Mon Paz Kettle Corn and Popcorn Factory, Honda City of Liverpool, Pizza Man, Canine Camp Dog Daycare, Chick-fil-A Cicero, Avicoli's Canine Campground Dog Boarding, and the Mill House Market for bringing you Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on the road. We use the hashtags Wake Up Call on the road, Wake Up Call OTR, and Wake Up Call everywhere as we are in the great state of Florida for Florida in Focus. And I always get to feel the warmth every single Wednesday because I get joined by my partner every single week with Mike Safka. Mike, as always, thank you so much for all you do. And please know that we appreciate it all over the world, your tireless effort to help us out in fantasy and to consistently show us that football is so much more than the X's and O's. We really do appreciate it. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate the opportunity and I'm excited to speak with you next time. So this is a look at Mike Sofka's 2021 mock draft in the first round, doing this mock draft for you ahead of the NFL draft. And we'll put our draft picks up against the actual results of the night to see just how right Mike and I are, how wrong we are, what we think about the decisions that were made, if they make sense to us or if some of them were shocked. So once again, just to give you a look at it in its full form, Mike went Trevor Lawrence, number one overall to the Jaguars <clears throat> quarterback, then quarterback Zach Wilson to the Jets at number two, quarterback Mac Jones to the Niners at number three, who traded up from the 12th pick. Kyle Pitts, the first tight end off the board coming out of Florida, going number four on Mike's mock draft in the first round to the Atlanta Falcons. Penny Sewell, offensive tackle out of Oregon, going number five to the Bengals. Jamar Chase, wide receiver, going number six to the Dolphins. Devontae Smith, wide receiver, going number seven to the Detroit Lions. Justin Fields out of Ohio State, their quarterback going eighth to the Carolina Panthers, who now have Sam Darnold and Teddy Bridgewater, who they gave money to in a three-year contract to last season, only to seemingly replace him already. Mike thinks there's going to be a three-headed run at quarterback there in Carolina, if not four. Uh, Trey Lance at number nine, Mike believes, will go to the Denver Broncos quarterback coming out of North Dakota State. And rounding out the top ten in Mike's mock draft, he has Caleb Farley, cornerback, going to the Dallas Cowboys at number ten. Taking a look at the rest of Mike's picks here from 11 to 21, he has Gregory Rousseau, the edge rusher, going to the Giants at 11. Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, going to the Eagles at 12. Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, going to the Chargers at number 13. Quiddy Payne, one of the coolest names in the draft, going as an edge rusher to the Vikings at 14. J.C. Horn going to the Patriots at number 15, the cornerback out of South Carolina. And number 16, Mike believes that the Arizona Cardinals will continue to add to their wide receiver core with Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota. Then number 17, one of the names in the draft that's so easy to say, Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, coming from Notre Dame at linebacker. The first running back off the board, Najee Harris, Mike believes will be going to the Miami Dolphins at 18 for their second pick of the first round. He believes the Washington football team, who still has no name, will draft Micah Parsons, who will dip to 19 in Mike's mock draft in the first round of the 2021 NFL draft out of Penn State going to Washington. Kadarius Tony Mike has going at wide receiver to the Chicago Bears at 20. And Elijah Vera Tucker, the inside offensive lineman going to the Colts at number 21, rounding out Mike's mock draft from 22 to 32, we have Jason Away going, the edge rusher coming out of Penn State and going to the Titans at 22. Aziz Ojalari, the edge rusher, going to the Jets at 23. Travis Etienne going to the Pittsburgh Steelers just one pick before he could have been reunited with his quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Mike has him going to Pittsburgh out of Clemson. And number 24, the running back, Travis Etienne, who was a terror to many teams, including Syracuse over the years. At number 25, Mike believes that the Jacksonville Jaguars will try to shore up their issue at tight end that they've had for the last two or three years with Penn State tight end Pat Fryermuth. And then at number 26, he believes the Browns will take Jalen Phillips, the edge rusher out of Miami. At number 27 for the Ravens, Trayvon Morig Woodard, the safety coming out of TCU going to the Ravens. Elijah Moore, wide receiver out of Ole Miss, going to the Saints at 28, who definitely need help there. Zaven Collins, my guy out of the American Athletic Conference's Tulsa Golden Hurricane, going to the Packers at 29. Terrence Marshall Jr., wide receiver out of LSU, going to the Bills at 30. Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle, going to the Chiefs at 31, who definitely need help on the offensive line. 
as we saw that that was a big glaring issue in the Super Bowl against the Bucs as they could not stop the Bucs defense, which is a very respectable defense. We're unable to do anything to quiet that defense in any way, shape, or form with the offensive line having a couple guys that were injured. It definitely shows you how important your offensive line is. That Pat, As Pat Mahomes ran for a combined, I think it was something of 400 yards from scrimmage because he was running around the field most of the time. And Joe Tryon is who will end the mock draft for Mike Sofka as he has chosen Joe Tryon, the edge rusher out of Washington, to go to the reigning champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That is Mike Sofka of Hall of Fame Fantasy Football.com's mock draft for 2021 in the first round. To take a look back at my mock draft and who I chose in the first round here, I equaled Mike with Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson, going to my Jaguars at number one. Zach Wilson going to the Jets to be their future quarterback here as they got rid of Sam Darnold, who is still in his rookie contract, and uh, three years in and got rid of him already. So I have uh, Zach Wilson going, as he does, to the Jets at quarterback at number two. I think the San Francisco 49ers traded up from 12 to three to make a big time splash and to go after Trey Lance, who has some question marks, but a lot of potential upside coming out of North Dakota state as a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers who just got Jimmy Garoppolo a few seasons ago and went to the Super Bowl. And it seems like they're already to let already ready to let him go. Say that 10 times fast, already ready, but uh, to look to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo or have him fade off into the sunset you know, I said Jimmy G didn't stay healthy a lot. And when he finally stays healthy for a season, let's see how far he goes. Well, in his healthy season, he went to the Super Bowl and he lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. After that, it looks like the Niners are already looking to the future. And Trey Lance, I believe, is the guy that they traded up for. Devontae Smith will help, speaking of the future and changing, you know, turning to that next chapter. The Atlanta Falcons going with Devontae Smith, in my opinion, out of Alabama, the first wide receiver off the board going to the Falcons who will eventually have to live in a world without Julio Jones, which is tough to say for any Falcons fan. I'm sorry, Joe, if you had a little gasp of air there, but Devonte Smith, I believe will be your future. And there's nothing wrong with that at number four at number five. I don't think the Bengals can help themselves as they will reunite Jamar chase, the wide receiver out of LSU with his quarterback, Joe Burrow, who he won a national championship with in the college football playoff just a couple seasons ago. He'll be number five to Cincinnati. And that means that Miami gets the awesome, awesome opportunity to pick up the first tight end of the draft and one of the best receivers in the draft and a guy who can have an incredible career of maybe even a decade, if not more, in the NFL. God willing, he does. Keeping him in the great state of Florida, the sunshine state, ever so bright. And this spotlight's going to make a lot of people happy as this man goes from Gainesville to Miami, Florida and South Beach, going from the University of Florida to the Miami Dolphins. I have Kyle Pitts. Tight end going to the Dolphins at number six. Number seven, the, the Detroit Lions, as they try to move into a new era, cannot help themselves with this man falling to them. Penn State's linebacker, Micah Parsons, who I covered when he was getting recruited, will go number seven to the Lions. I think this is potentially one of the best picks they've had in recent history. First defensive player off, and I know people probably want Detroit to pick offensive guys, but they got plenty of draft picks coming up in their trade for Matt Stafford. They got Jared Goff under center at quarterback, and he's a lot younger and a former number one pick. And, 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 and they've already brought in some guys to help him in the skill core on offense. So I think Micah Parsons is a perfect fit to go to Detroit. And that leaves Carolina, who doesn't know who the heck their quarterback's going to be. Well, they need somebody to protect the quarterback. And that's offensive tackle out of Oregon, Penny Sewell, one of my favorite names in the draft as well at number eight overall. That means at number nine, the Denver Broncos will have their 52nd quarterback in about five years. Justin Fields out of Ohio State will go to the Denver Broncos at number nine. And Patrick Sertan the second. This is one of those picks that Dallas can't pass up coming out of Alabama. Roll Tad, roll Tad. That cornerback going to the Dallas Cowboys. Patrick Sertan going to look good in that beautiful Navy and silver then that brings us to number 11 kind of funny here as the cowboys the giants and the eagles will draft in succession from 10 to 12 and they're all in the same division of the nfc east which was the worst division in football last year there was a time where we thought that a four-win team was going to go to the playoffs and get to host a playoff game due to nfl rules number 11 the giants will dig a little bit here not too far but he's not arguably the number one guy best available at wide receiver but i think the New York Giants are going to go for Elijah Moore. 
just as I said before, uh, with the New York Giants making their decision to not pick the best available offensive lineman and go to the fourth best. Well, same case with Elijah Moore, but I think they get a lot of talent. At number 12, I have Jalen Waddle, wide receiver, going to the Eagles. Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle out of Northwestern, going 13 to the Chargers. Quiddy Payne, the edge rusher out of Michigan, going to the Vikings at 14, which means in my draft, and I already kind of warned you about this, the New England Patriots, according to my mock draft and my projections, will have Mac Jones out of Alabama, their quarterback, fall all the way to 15 to little old Bill Belichick. And as I told you before, worst thing in the world to do to Bill Belichick is to piss him off. The man already looks like the human embodiment of being constipated. And now he's angry. And that's not a good thing for the rest of the NFL. Mac Jones going to the New England Patriots to be their new future quarterback. Rashad Bateman, number 16, going to the Arizona Cardinals. I also believe that they'll boaster up their wide receivers. Why not? You got a guy there. Why not take him? I agreed with Mike with Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. Linebacker out of Notre Dame going to the Las Vegas Raiders at number 17. I also agree that Najee Harris will be number 18 to the Miami Dolphins, running back out of Alabama and the first running back off the board. Kadarius Toney, I have him going to the Washington football team who gets a steal here at, at number 19 with the wide receiver out of Florida. Terrence Marshall Jr., I believe, will go to Chicago out of LSU next as they, as I said, I gave you a forewarning when they made those trades for those guys that I wasn't sold on the players they brought into Chicago, and them drafting a rookie wide receiver proves to that exact fact that they did not get what they're looking for yet. The Indianapolis Colts, Elijah Vera Tucker, inside offensive lineman going to the Colts because they need to protect their quarterback. Number 22, J.C. Horn, cornerback out of South Carolina, going to the Titans in my mock draft here with my picks for 2021's first round. Travis Etienne going to the Jets. I think the Jets are not smart enough to make this decision, but if they are, I'm giving them the credit that they won't let Travis Etienne fall to the Pittsburgh Steelers or to the Jacksonville Jaguars. That means Pittsburgh will go with Javante Williams, a big back who is going to make them very happy at 24 overall coming out of North Carolina, who I covered this season with his partner, Michael Carter in the backfield. He'll go 24 to the Steelers. Pat Fryermuth will go to the Jaguars. I agree with Mike at tight end out of Penn State. At 26, the Browns will take Rondell Moore, wide receiver out of Purdue. The Ravens need to protect Lamar Jackson. He's precious cargo. The offensive tackle, Christian Derrissaw out of Virginia Tech, will head to the Ravens, who could do a lot of things with this pick, including taking wide receiver. But I think if you got a quarterback that's going to be running all over the place, you know with Robert Griffin III and other guys that have been hurt this way, you got to protect him. Amon Ra St. Brown, wide receiver out of USC, going to the Saints after that. I agree with Mike that my guy Zabin Collins at linebacker will be going to the Packers at 29. Caleb Farley falls in my draft to the Bills, cornerback out of Virginia Tech at number 30. Number 31, Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma State, going to Kansas City. And Jalen Phillips, the edge rusher out of Miami, Florida, rounding out the first round, going to the Bucks at number 32 overall. This, once again, a second look at Mike's mock draft in the first round, as well as my own here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora in this special Inside of the Fantasy Football Power Hour where we bring you every single pick from 1 to 32 in this year's NFL Draft.